Hello everyone, it's Ross Kelly, CEO and Realtor with Love and Realty and Investment Company, and this is Simply Vidalia episode number 17. On today's episode, our special guest is Jeff McCormick, the headmaster at Vidalia Heritage Academy in Vidalia. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Appreciate the opportunity to come in here and share with you a little bit. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. You know, it seems like quite some time now I've been trying to get you in here and get on the show, and uh, just with all our schedules being busy, it's been quite a task to get I'm us number together. 17 on the list, evidently. So that, no, no, no. You are much higher than that. It's just been number 17 getting in here. <laughs> Thanks. But thank you for coming in, and uh, I just wanted to be able to tell the, the viewing audience a little bit about Vidalia Heritage Academy and all the things going on there. As you know, I'm a big Vidalia Heritage advocate. Right. Uh, I have two children that attend Vidalia Heritage Academy, and uh, are three actually, and uh, very pleased with the school and uh, pleased that you guys are in the community. Well, uh, it, thanks so much for your support and uh, for the community support as well. Uh, it's been great. I've been there 10 years now. The mm -hmm. school started in 1998, but I came here in 2007 as the headmaster. And, uh, we had 65 kids that first year I was here, and uh, now we um, uh, are very thankful for an enrollment of 400 students right here wow. in the area from pre-K all the way through 12th grade. So we've seen some tremendous growth over the last 10 years, and especially over the last five years. And we don't see that stopping anytime soon. And so there are a lot of great and unique things happening from pre pre-K all the way through high school. So we're very, we're very humbled and honored uh, that God has blessed us with, uh, with this type of growth. Well, I'll tell you, growth is a good and a bad problem to have, I think, more than on the good side, though. Well, growing pains uh, <laughs> hurt. Yeah. Uh, growing problems, however, are fun. And so, yeah. you know, you kind of have some of those same things uh, here, space issues uh, that we've had to deal with, uh, lack of facilities at different times. But we're very thankful for the partnership we have, obviously, with First Baptist Church in Vidalia and using a lot of their facilities. And then we you know, purchase facilities of our own. Uh, purchased the old Murkison Funeral Home here about four years ago, and that has been just a, a, a blessing. We remodeled it, and then this past year we added on to it again. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we've just kind of seen uh, a lot of those growing problems and pains go away a little bit because we've been able to continually each and every year add more facilities. And now we've got a big new plan uh, to yeah. add even more coming up. Good. Now, you're originally not from this area. Tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you ended up in Vidalia. Well, I'm from the Holy Land, uh, South Carolina, just so you'll know that. Uh, but, uh, but no, I am originally from South Carolina, just out, outside of Augusta, really. I grew up across the river there, and, and um, I grew up there you know, all my life. Uh, started out, uh, went to college there at the University of South Carolina, and, and uh, felt, uh, felt a call of God into the ministry. And so eventually left Carolina, moved to Florida, where I spent uh, 25 years or, or, or so uh, pastoring some of the great churches in that particular state, and uh, then eventually left the pastoral ministry. Didn't know what I was going to do, and, and God uh, you know, was nudging me toward Christian education, and this particular position came available, and, and so it's just kind of been an incredible uh, journey ever since. So uh, I, I've just been really, really humbled by the opportunity to lead this school and the, the students and the families there. Well, I believe all the families and the staff are very blessed and fortunate to have you too. So, Well, thank you so much for that. But uh, but it, it really is a joint effort. And we're not perfect by any means, no. and you know that. But uh, And, and, and you know, we get things wrong every now and then. But, but the habitual practice of our life is to seek to honor God. Matter of fact, our mission statement says that we exist to equip students spiritually, intellectually, and physically to love God and serve Him as Christ's ambassadors in the world. That really drives everything that we do. And I think that's what, it doesn't make us better than anybody, but it, but it certainly is the, the difference, I believe, in that we, we approach education and, and mentoring these young students with this biblical worldview in mind. We, we don't just tack Bible classes in chapel onto the end of a day or end of a week. I mean, it permeates everything that yeah. we do. And so it, it makes it a, a, an incredibly unique place and and we're just blessed that we have that opportunity to do that yeah and also in, in the years uh, past we've seen with the expansion the uh, things have come like sports yeah uh, high school program why don't you touch a little bit on the sports and what now is available at Body Heritage Academy? I guess we're probably in our fourth year, maybe fifth year of, of organized athletics here. Uh, we currently participate in the GICAA uh, here in the state. It's the second largest prep organization uh, in the state, only behind the, uh, the GHSA. Uh, so we participate there, and we participate in a number of sports. Uh, this past year, we uh, added uh, middle school football. 
uh, which was an incredible success. Didn't know how many kids we'd have, and we wound up uh, winning our region. We were undefeated in the region, went to the playoffs, and unfortunately lost in that first round uh, by a touchdown. Um, we have competition cheerleading. Uh, cross country has been big. You had a son that, that ran in cross, cross country, and so that's been huge for us over the last few years, winning state titles every year that we've been in the, uh, the GICAA uh, from elementary right on up through the, the high school level. Um, we uh, also have archery, which is just really uh, another large. We probably have 55, 60 kids in the archery program. Mm -hmm. uh, we've won the region. We've sent kids to nationals and state titles, and uh, not, not won a state title, but uh, but they've been those and having won the region titles. So that's been great. Golf, tennis. We've won several state championships in tennis over the last several years. Uh, baseball's been big for us too. Middle school baseball, and we've tried to start everything at the lower levels to try to build the program. And, um, you know, we just finished our third year, had another great year of, of middle school baseball, and we'll be moving into the varsity level uh, with that this next year. Um, and then this coming year, we're going to be adding varsity football. We had so many eighth graders and then some kids that were already in the high school that really wanted to play, and we just felt like it would be an incredible opportunity uh, to go ahead and move right on into there. And we've tried to take it really slow. We add maybe a sporty year um, or maybe a, a varsity level each year. And uh, and we've just we've just seen uh, again um, uh, great success, but we do want to give all, all the honor and glory to God because I mean He's brought these kids. They've worked hard. Their parents have worked with us, and our coaches have worked hard with it as well. Absolutely. And also now this year, if I'm uh, not mistaken, is the second year of the graduating class of high school program. That's right. Correct? That's right. This is our second graduating uh, class, and we're very excited about them. All of our students. Uh, uh, we're able to get in the college of their choice, early admission. Uh, we've got them going to University of Georgia, Georgia Southern, uh, Augusta State University, uh, Trinity uh, Bible College in Jacksonville, and, and STC. Uh, we began this program uh, again four years ago, uh, five years ago now, <coughs> to really um, challenge our students. Uh, we do a lot with... Um, uh, Move On When Ready, which is a program through the state of Georgia uh, where students, while they're in high school, can actually go and, and pick up college-level courses. And we have students right now that are in college uh, while they're still in school with us. Uh, they're in college at Bruton Parker. They're in college at East Georgia. They're in college at Georgia Southern. They're in college at STC. So they're taking all these things, and they're able to go ahead and, and pick up most of their core courses. I've got several of our top students this year that are graduating with right at 60 credit hours wow. between what they've done with Move On Ready and what they've done with advanced placement uh, courses that we teach on campus. And the great thing, too, about Move On When Ready is a lot of our staff are qualified by the colleges to actually teach those college-level courses on our campus so they don't have to leave the campus. Some of them do because we can't do everything there. But, uh, but the Move On When Ready has been an incredible program and to watch these kids be able to, to really excel at that level, to know that they can do that, and it gives them a leg up as they kind of go into college and they know what it's about, they understand the, the workload. So that part's been, been phenomenal for us yeah. uh, with the Move On When Ready and the entire high school program. Well, that's nice. And you also offer, or the last few years, I know, I don't know exactly how many years in a row, you guys have participated and taken a group to Harvard Model Congress. Tell that's us right. about we, that. We just finished our fifth year of Harvard Model Congress. We are the only school in Georgia uh, that is selected to go every year. And this is the premier United States government simulation experience, premier really in the world. And so our students, they go through a long process. They have to, when they first come in, they have to have a perfect 4.0 average. They have to maintain that. Uh, and they go through, they jump through a lot of hoops to be on the team. And then when they get on the team, uh, they, they apply for a particular committee in Congress or, or something within the U.S. government. And once they do that, uh, they are assigned by Harvard that particular position. And they don't know what, they, they apply for the committee, but they don't know if they're going to have to represent a Democrat or yeah. if they're going to have to represent a Republican. It's an incredible uh, critical thinking uh, exercise for them because they may be from one polit particular political persuasion or their family uh -huh. may be all of a sudden they have to now portray in front of 1600 other students some of the brightest kids in the world uh, in this simulation experience and they have to portray that person and be believable and try to pass legislation through all of it so we took uh, 12 this year uh, 16 of us all together including the adults and we had 12 and they did a phenomenal job and we had several freshmen this year and they were just incredible in what they did standing their own against kids that were already accepted to Harvard if you will wow. I mean it, it was really just incredible doing things from 
uh, human genetic engineering, uh, price gouging in pharmaceuticals, CIA interrogation tactics, wow. uh, you know, uh, homeland security, all these different things that you would never dream of in high school that you would be you know, writing position papers on and then trying to craft legislation in the form of a bill, wow. whether you're in the Senate or in the House, taking it to both houses to, or to committee, to the House, to the Senate, to the president's desk. Um, it's, it's really a phenomenal experience. I mean, these kids never forget this opportunity. It, they really don't. And they raise their own money to get there. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's an unparalleled opportunity for someone this age to be able to, to, to go and participate in something like that. I mean, it's just nothing that you don't see most schools participate well, in. Well, and, and, and the other thing is they get to experience Harvard. Mm -hmm. uh, again, um, one of the most prestigious universities in the world. And um, to go there, they sit in on classes. Uh, they are able to go to seminars there. Year. And there were a lot of different seminars this year that dealt with the 2016 election. And uh, everybody was very respectful uh, while people had different opinions. And you've got kids from, again, all over the country, really all over the world there. Um, to have our students to be able to uh, to know what they're going to face in a real world, real world setting mm -hmm. and to be able to know how to respond to that setting. Because no matter where you go, whether it, you, you, what college you go to, it's going to be different than your high school setting, your That's hometown right. setting. Yeah. You, there are going to be people who are going to, at that time, uh, cast doubt on everything you believe. And I'm not talking about just faith matters. I'm talking about everything from America itself to, to uh, health and, and human services, all those things. And so we really want to prepare our kids to know how to defend what they believe and know why they can have confidence in what they believe, whether it's history or science or, or, or faith matters, if you will. So, so it's really an incredible preparation time. And we really want to see that expand with a lot of our students uh, this coming year uh, or the coming years to just see more of them have an opportunity to go there and, and to do that. Because there is really, there's nothing like that experience for them. That's right. And I know once they get up to a certain age that apologetics comes into play, you have an apologetics class or program and that <coughs> That's also right. helps prepare. <clears throat> That's correct. We, we, and, and most all these kids have to go through the apologetics class. Now, the ninth graders don't uh, before they go to Harvard. But um, it's really, uh, and apologetics, again, for those who don't know, it's, it's defending uh, your faith. Um, and so we really want them to understand why they can have wh why the scriptures are reliable, uh, why the accounts of the resurrection are reliable. Uh, we we take it even beyond that. You know, we talk about you know issues such as as abortion, and and while when they get to places like that, they they don't try to necessarily engage them in a, a faith based conversation. They engage them with the question, well, what is the unborn? And and you know when you when you bring it down to that, you know it, it begins to, to to really yeah. Um, cause people to think that have just, you know, diametrically been for or, or against. And so it's a, it's a great class for these kids to, to do. Uh, the other thing we, we introduced last year, we'll be introducing back this year, um, is, a, is a logic class. Okay. And uh, we use a curriculum called the Art of Argument. Now, some of you may have some children that would probably really do well in that particular <laughs> class, and we've got some. But, but it helps them to understand how to craft a debate in that setting. Yeah. How do you craft a debate in, or, or a conversation, if you will, on any particular subject? And we just feel like it really just takes these students and it just kind of lifts them up above the average at that particular point where they can do that. And, uh, you know, we had a student this year who at Harvard Model Congress was uh, a part of the Harvard Model Congress media. And uh, received some acclaim for some of the articles that he wrote. That was, you know, you, he covers the different things going on. So yeah. that's been really neat to kind of see some of those things too. Well, that's good. And then that's nice. It's nice that you offer first the apologetics, and then you go on to offer the other class that teaches them how to tactfully, in a Christ-like way, defend. That's right. What we believe that's right. in. That's right. I mean, and, and you know, it's uh, we try to get every student through it um, through those cl classes during their high school career. Uh, but we do the same thing even in middle school. You know, our eighth graders always go to the Georgia, uh, go to the Dome. They go to the Capitol, and they're a page for a day. And we teach them again about what's going on in the Georgia, Georgia legislature. We teach another class called a Biblical Worldview of Current Events, mm -hmm. uh, where kids come in, and we list the event, and we look at what it says on the secular news, what the American view of these things are, what the what the worldview of it is that outside of the U.S., and then what does, what does the Bible have to say about this? So that they have an understanding of what's going on in the world. So it's really a unique process to kind of see them do that as we kind of go through. Yeah, and uh, you know that uh, athletics is good. You know, all these other things that the school has going on is good, but I think that we, it's, it's no mistake that the Christ, 
uh, centered biblical worldview education is probably the core of everything. Well, it is on. the core. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, we we run everything through that mission statement. The mission statement has not changed uh, because administrations have changed. It's not changed because headmasters have changed. Uh, it has been the core of the school since the foundation. It was something that they that they came upon and that they they prayed over. And none of that has changed since that particular time. And so everything we do is driven through that because we believe it comes back to, to the, the Scripture itself. And then we be, obviously we believe that Scripture is rooted in, in the living Word, which is Jesus Himself. That's right. And as you spoke earlier, the school has expanded, uh, has started using other facilities uh, of the First Baptist Church, has went out and bought their own facilities. Right. But I believe there's also a future plan for a little bit more expansion. Won't you tell us about that? Yeah, we do. Uh, we um, brought this up last year. We're going to um, look at adding on to what is now the elementary building, which is the old, um, uh, was the educational building there beside the historic sanctuary there on the corner of, of, uh, of uh, Church Street and, and 280. And so we're looking right now, the plans are uh, to build about a 15,000 square foot expansion right there that will house more classrooms so that that would begin to be the elementary and middle school. And then the high school building would be, again, on the corner of Durden and 2nd, the next block over. Uh, so that's kind of how that's going to be. Uh, we're raising money right now. There's some uh, other opportunities that may, or may be presenting itself pretty soon that we may actually build larger than that, uh, just with some, some partnerships that we've uh, been, uh, been exploring. So we're very excited about that. And uh, we hope to be able to tell that, uh, tell some things about that here in the near future. But, but right now, that's still the plan. Uh, we did the one expansion at the upper school, um, and now we're going to look at this one at the, at the elementary school, which will then become elementary and middle. A lot of exciting stuff going on. A lot of great stuff. So we appreciate all your support and appreciate the community support. And anybody have any questions, please uh, look us up on the web, vitaeheritage.com. Well, good. And, you know, being president of the Downtown Vitae Association, uh, we enjoy having VHA downtown and it's a great organization uh, organization you guys are always volunteering to help with veterans events and you know thing different uh things going on downtown and so you know community support is very important obviously well we did look before we started this building process we did look at, at moving out mm -hmm. but we kept coming back to the idea that we love being downtown we love being a part of the community and well i know schools can do that when they move out but but traditionally schools move out they get a lot of acreage and understand all those things and, and that was an option for us but we felt like because of the things that we were able to do mm -hmm. where on 9-11 we line the streets at the Veterans Day we come and sing we volunteer at all these different organizations that are around the downtown area uh, we like being visible because we believe that, that there's a message of hope uh, that when you see young people engaging in their community and understanding and, and some of these kids weren't even born when 9-11 happened matter of fact I don't, I, I don't, I'm trying to think now, maybe even our seniors, one or two of them may have been may born. May have been, yeah. But, um, uh, but, you know, for them to understand that process and to understand what is necessary in, in making a community better, uh, that they have those opportunities. And we try to get them involved in so many different mission organizations around town and uh, you know, during that time. But that's a part of being a, a part of the community right there. Yes, it is. It is, and again, it's uh, very welcomed by the community, all the organizations that you guys participate with and help. I know they're all very thankful. Well, we're thankful for the opportunity to work, to work with them and partner with them. We really are. Well, now you said a while ago um, a website address that people could find, Vitae Heritage Academy. Why don't you tell us where the physical address is, and if anybody of you in the audience has uh, wants some, uh, some questions about VHA, possibly enrolling their children, what's the phone number they can call? Well, you can call us at 537-6679. Uh, that's the main number. Uh, our physical address for the elementary school is 101 East 1st Street. For the middle and high school is 207 East 2nd Street. Uh, for the preschool, you can, uh, again, still the same thing, 101 East 1st Street, even though it's in a different uh, a building. Uh, but you can call us, uh, look at vadeaheritage.com, get any information about tuition, about schedules, calendars, all those things. Financial aid is available. We do believe we have the most affordable tuition uh, anywhere, probably within 50, 60 miles. And, and we have financial aid for qualified families. So we'd love for you guys, if, if you have any questions, give us a call. Come by for a tour any given day. Uh, we'd love to have you. Well, Jeff, I know you're a busy man. you got a lot going on, so I want to thank you for your time, right. and thank you for coming in and participating on an episode of Simply Vidalia. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, there you have it, everybody. Jeff McCormick, Headmaster of Vidalia Heritage Academy. I'm Ross Kelly, CEO and Realtor of Lovin's Realty. We'll see you next time. You got paid.